Ready? Yeah. <laughs> so, you've planned your trip to Iran and you're getting excited about coming, or you're simply curious and don't know what to expect. Here are 20 things that you should know before coming to Iran. Iranians are not Arabs. The vast majority of them are Persian. They speak Persian, also known as Farsi. Calling them an Arab is almost as bad as calling an Irish man British or English. In fact, that happens a little bit too often when I travel around. Educate yourselves. I'm not going to go into detail on this one. I made a video about it and you should watch it. It's linked in the description down below. The majority of passport holders need a visa for Iran, but it's relatively easy for most of us. If you are from any of the lime colored countries, then you can get a visa on arrival or speed this up by applying for an e-visa. However, if you are from any of the grey countries, you will have to apply for a visa in advance and book onto a tour as you cannot travel independently. If your e-visa is rejected, don't panic. Mine was actually rejected. I did a video on it. Again, it's linked in the description down below. But anyway, I showed up at IKA in Tehran and I got a visa on arrival, no problem. Iran has their own banking system and is completely segmented from the rest of the world. What does this mean? Well, it means that if you bring your Visa or MasterCard to Iran, they are completely useless. Stick them into a machine and you're not going to get anything. So throw them away, bring all your money in cash. Cash is king. The official currency of Iran is the Rial. However, the Rial has so many zeros on the end of it that the Iranians have come up with another way of referring to it known as Toman. What is Toman? Well, Toman is Rial divided by 10. So if something is 1 million Rial, it's 100,000 Toman. But to confuse you even more, they don't bother with those other zeros. So if something is 1 million Rial, it's 100,000 Toman, but we're gonna say it's 100 Toman. The exchange rate you see in Iran is not the same as the exchange rate that's available when you actually come to Iran. In fact, the exchange rate in Iran is so much better. When you arrive in the airport, I suggest exchanging a little bit of money, maybe 10 to 20 euro, just to get you to the nearest city. Ask a local to help you get to a legitimate exchange shop. Do not go to a bank because the bank has the same exchange rate that is on the internet, but there's these exchange shops where the rate's gonna be so much better. Ask a local to bring you there. Do not exchange money with anyone on the street under any circumstances because as a foreigner you're probably going to be ripped off so go with a reliable source to one of the exchange places. Furthermore unfortunately the Iranian currency real is very unstable. I was first in Iran two years ago in July 2017 and back then one euro got me 41,000 real and today March 2019 one euro gets me almost 150,000 real. Good thing for foreigners, but really bad for the Iranians and they don't deserve it. It's unfortunate. Any women who come to Iran, Muslim or not, have to cover up their hair, arms and legs. However, when you get to Iran, you'll see a lot of Iranian women really pushing the boundaries on this. They'll dress really, really fashionably, wear different colors and a lot of them have their hair hanging out the back. The dress code for men is a lot more relaxed. However, at the very least, you're supposed to wear t-shirts to this length. So don't think about wearing any stringers or anything like that. And you have to wear trousers. Now, some foreigners do wear shorts and you're probably gonna get away with it, but it's best just to blend in, wear trousers, stick to their rules. The transport in Iran is way better than you'd ever imagine. The road network is very good. The roads are really good. They go all over the country. There are buses that service nearly every single city and town. There are trains that go everywhere. Ferries service all of the islands and there are planes to every major city. And best of all, it is extremely affordable. For example, I bagged myself a flight from Tehran to Isfahan for just 1,779,000 real, or should I say 12 euro and 50 cent. Absolute bargain. For taxis, make sure to download the Snap app. It is Iran's answer to Uber and it works relatively well. 
albeit the taxi drivers do tend to ring you and ask you where you are, Kojai, and I'm just like, location, location? <laughs> If you want to hail a taxi, it's pretty easy. You don't even have to stick your hand out. Just stand on the side of the road. Someone will stop. Although as a foreigner, you're gonna get a bit of a raw deal if you don't know the value of the distance to where you're traveling. So keep that in mind. On the topic of getting around, the driving in Iran is a bit crazy. It's a bit like the wild, wild west and it takes a bit of getting used to. When I landed in IKA at the end of January and I was with the taxi driver I, uh, that picked me up, we were driving to Tehran. It was the heaviest rain I've ever seen. He didn't care. He was driving fast, no problem. I was genuinely sitting there like, Ugh. and to make things worse, there was an oil tanker, one of the massive ones, overturned on the other side of the road. But don't let that deter you from coming to Iran. It's great here. SIM cards in Iran are really cheap and data is also very cheap for just 150,000 rial or should I say 15,000 tomen, let's shorten that to 15 tomen, you can pick up a SIM card and for just 300,000 rial or should I say 30,000 tomen or should I say 30 tomen, you can charge your SIM card with 10 gigs of data for one month. That's loads of data. And having a SIM card is also really, really important if you want to make use of the Snap Taxi app that I just mentioned previously. Also, if you're going to be in Iran for longer than 30 days, then you're going to have to register your mobile phone or else it will get blacklisted on Iran's network. So to find out how to register your phone, I've left a link down in the description below. To use websites like Facebook and YouTube in Iran, you are going to have to get a VPN as those websites are blocked here. If you're coming for more than three weeks, I would recommend using ExpressVPN and I've left a link down below in the description. If you click on that, then you'll get a free month, and so will I. What are you waiting for? Let's help each other out. Iranian hospitality is truly incredible. They are so, so nice. Ask anyone that's been to Iran, and I guarantee you they'll say the same thing. You can walk down the street here, and everyone will say hello. People will ask you, where are you from? And so many people will invite you for tea, for food, to come and meet their friends and family, or to spend time in their home. The list goes on and on. Iranians love tea, even more than the Irish and English. I know, that is a bold statement to make, but it's true. Everywhere you go in Iran, you'll be offered tea. You can go into a shop for clothes and they'll offer you tea. And they don't have it with milk here, they have it with a rock candy called Nabat. You stick it in, you spin it around, and it is absolutely delicious. If you love trying new food, then you're in for a treat when you come to Iran. With such a diverse selection of foods across all cities and towns, it is a foodie's paradise here. However, if you're a vegetarian, I hope you enjoy eating eggplant and falafels. <laughs> I know, there is, there is loads of things you can have, I guess. It's not, it's not, it's not, cut that, cut that. In my personal opinion, it is so important to learn the Farsi numerals before you come to Iran. In most shops around the country, especially small shops, the prices of all the items are gonna be written in Farsi numerals. So, learn this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the way I actually got to learn it was, Every time I was in a car or a taxi, I would be looking at all the registration plates of all the cars and in my head or even out loud, be practicing saying, that's a one, that's a four, that's a five. And if you want to become next level, you can learn to count to 10. Yek, do, se, chahar, panj, shish, haft, hasht, no, da. Or if you want to be a next level boss like me, you'll learn to count to a thousand. Along with the Farsi numerals, here are a few phrases that you should learn. Salam, hello. Khubi, how are you? Khubam, I'm fine. Merci, thank you. Khuda hafez, goodbye. And something you're going to be asked a lot is, Kujai hasti, where are you from? I say, man Irlandi hastam, I'm from Ireland. In a shop, cherad, how much? When somebody's working as well, you should greet them with hasta naboshid, which doesn't really have a direct translation, but basically means don't get tired. If you're in a taxi, rust is right and chap is left. Bepeached rust, turn right. Bepeached chap, turn left. Learn these and traveling around Iran will be so much easier. 
When you hail a taxi or anything else, always confirm the price so that it is clear and concise between you and the other person. If you don't do this, you're leaving yourself open to being ripped off. Another good tip that I have for you is that every single Iranian product inside shops across Iran have the price written on them. It's sometimes quite hard to find. Look around the can or whatever it is and you will see the price. Written in Farsi numerals, so you gotta learn them. I hope you haven't been skipping leg day because most toilets in Iran are squat toilets, which just basically is a hole in the ground that you have to squat over. And the public ones don't have toilet paper, so you're gonna have to carry tissue around with you all times, or you can just adapt and be a local by using the hose provided. So wash yourself with the hose. So you've two choices, bring toilet paper with you or adapt. Personally, I choose to adapt, live like a local. Iran is a dry country, which means alcohol is outright banned across the entire country. However, surprise, surprise, you're more than likely gonna come across alcohol if you visit I Iran. What? We have more to shoot. No, 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 we finished the video first. No, yeah. and too much to Finish the video first, Imad. Oh. And, okay, 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 just one, just one, yeah, okay. Just salamati. Salamati, salamati. <sighs> That's water, Imad. Yeah, what do you expect? It's illegal, alcohol. You've got to take them off everywhere. You might not be used to it, but you've got to take them off in a lot of situations. Entering someone's home, take off shoes. You normally swap them out with some slippers. There are women-only sections on most forms of public transport. However, women don't actually have to use these sections. But if they are alone or in groups of other women, then they tend to make use of them. And men and women can't go to the gym at the same time in Iran. Uh, there's normally like uh, designated times for each. For example, women can go in the morning until 3 p.m. and men from 3.30 p.m. until close, something like that. Shaking hands with the opposite sex is hit and miss here in Iran. I can only speak as a man. Some women shake my hand, some women don't. To be honest, I find most women do shake my hand. However, if they don't, you simply place your hand over your heart and they do the same and you kind of give each other a nice smile. That's how it is. A lot of other people say that you shouldn't shake hands with the opposite sex. However, in my personal opinion and experience, that is completely false and untrue. It's normally okay. Tarof is an Iranian custom by where when you are trying to pay for goods or service, the other party will refuse your payment and then you have to insist payment and then they refuse again and then you insist again until finally they accept your payment. It is a bit bizarre and takes a bit of getting used to. When I'm in a taxi, it happens quite a lot. I normally just end up putting the money on the man's lap. <laughs> But it, what it does remind me of is when uh, an uncle I haven't seen in a while, you know, tries to slip me a crisp 50 euro note and I'm like, oh, no, no, are you sure? No, no, it's fine. No, no, I don't need, thanks. Blowing your nose in public is considered extremely strange. So just avoid doing it at all costs to avoid everybody staring at you and thinking you're a weirdo. Good thing I'm alone right now. Oh, that's, that's what? What? Come on guys, what? I forgot, I forgot you were here. I was so alone with the camera. So, that is 20 things you need to know before coming to Iran. Thanks very much to Irfan and to Imad for helping out with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like, comment down below, let me know your feedback, and make sure to hit that subscribe button. I will see you in the next video real, real soon. Good, Good luck. luck.